Today brings what could be a crucial step in containing the Gulf oil spill. Also, the senators behind the long-awaited climate bill now have a new release date in mind. And what the Interior Department tells us about its decision to postpone the next step in Virginia's offshore leasing process. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. And good afternoon. I'm Tyler Suters in for Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for this Friday edition of the Energy Report. Gulf crews will now spend the weekend working on the giant containment box that BP has assembled and now delivered to the site of that massive oil leak. BP officials say robot submersibles will align that box and then drop it into place. Crews still need to connect a pipe to siphon the oil to a boat. We're told if all goes well, that oil will start to flow to a barge on the surface sometime on Sunday. Gulf seas today remain calm as the Coast Guard continues skimming oil from the surface, burning that oil at sea, and also dropping chemicals from the air to break up the slick. According to the latest radar images from the Gulf, that spill is now extending west around the Mississippi Delta. While it has its hands full with that Gulf disaster, the Department of the Interior is now temporarily postponing the leasing process for the Virginia coast. That state was supposed to be the next in line to begin offshore lease sales, but now Interior will postpone the public meetings on potential offshore activities. The department gave Clean Skies News two specific reasons for this delay. First, information from the ongoing review of OCS safety issues that President Obama ordered can be considered in the public meetings if they're postponed. And second, right now MMS is simply too focused on the Gulf spill to even conduct those necessary meetings. Virginia's junior senator Mark Warner says the drilling off of his state's coast is at least seven years away, so this delay in the hearing process is not critical to the overall lease sale in Virginia. Okay, I think you've heard this from us one, two, maybe more times than that, but the authors of the Senate climate legislation now say they are almost ready to roll out their bill. I know you've heard this before. But today, John Kerry and Joe Lieberman say they will unveil their long-awaited climate bill on Wednesday of next week. This afternoon, the two senators issued a statement that in part apparently refers to the Gulf disaster, reading now from their quote, the last weeks have given everyone with a stake in this issue a heightened understanding that, as a nation, we can no longer wait to solve this problem which threatens our economy, our security, and our environment. The senators had planned to unveil that bill back on April 26th, but co-author Lindsey Graham temporarily pulled his support over partisan concerns with Democratic leadership. Even with John Kerry's optimism, though, the future of his climate bill and fallout from the Gulf disaster, both are now threatening to splinter support for that measure. From the left of your screen, these are Democrats Bill Nelson, Robert Menendez, and Frank Lautenberg. All three represent coastal states, and all three say they will vote against any climate measure that includes new offshore drilling. There are also complaints within this, the Senate Energy Committee. Leaders Jeff Bingaman and Lisa Murkowski helped pass bipartisan energy legislation last year. And that is the bill that Majority Leader Harry Reid plans to combine with the upcoming KGL climate bill. But the Energy Committee's Acela bill, as it's known, includes provisions for new drilling in the eastern Gulf, and that has some Democrats wavering. Does this change your perspective at all about a clean energy or climate bill if new offshore exploration is included, given what was passed out of Acela last summer? Well, we, we've yet to, we know we've seen some proposals that, that people have had, but I think we'll see some changes to Acela. That's my guess. Um, I certainly fought in the committee to uh, not have the Destin area opened up to more drilling, so I've supported a more limited um, approach to that. So I think we'll have a big discussion on the floor about it. And clouding the future of this climate bill even further, Lindsey Graham today says it has become impossible, those are his words, to pass this legislation right now. The South Carolina Republican cites the political effects of the Gulf spill, saying it is now time to reassess climate legislation. Despite the scope of the Gulf oil spill, that is not the biggest factor at work right now on crude oil prices. Oil trading well below $80 a barrel over the last two days, and this seems to be the big reason. The Dow fell almost 1,000 points yesterday before regaining some of that lost ground, and it took oil prices along for the ride. Today I talked with energy market analyst Elliot Gu about the Dow's free fall. A lot of what happened yesterday was sort of a technical problem. Um, there's a rumor out there that a trader at, at uh, Citibank uh, cr uh, keyed in you know, a billion order instead of a million, um, you know, so-called fat finger trade. 
And we saw, you know, within 10 minutes, the market moved from down, the Dow moved from down sort of 300 and something to down 1,000 nearly. Mm -hmm. And then it came right back. Um, so that does indicate it was probably a technical problem. But that's certainly what's weighing on, on oil prices, I think, more than anything. Editor of the Energy Letter and also the Energy Strategist. Natural gas prices are up this week for the most part behind some strong U.S. economic reports. That news comes even though EIA reports that inventories are up above their five-year average. Royal Dutch Shell now says it will not be able to fulfill some of its oil contracts after this fire on one of its major pipelines in Nigeria. The company issued a statement today announcing force majeure, meaning it is impossible for the company to cover the promised supply from the field. This statement claims that the fire on its subsidiary's Trans Niger pipeline started because thieves tapped that line to steal crude oil. The company shut down the pipeline on Wednesday, running through the oil-rich Niger Delta. Attacks there have sharply increased global oil prices in the past, and that could happen again sometime in the future. Nigeria is one of the U.S.'s major sources of crude oil. You are looking at the man who was considered the favorite to replace U.N. Climate Chief Evo de Boer, according to Reuters. Sources familiar with the selection process say South Africa's Minister of Tourism, Martinus van Skulkvik, is one of two final candidates, and he apparently has the support of key countries. The other candidate, according to Reuters, is Costa Rica's Cristiana Figueres. U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon will eventually make the final decision here. Back home now, and the Obama administration is preparing to revive a civilian nuclear cooperation deal with Russia. This agreement would allow the two countries to exchange nuclear energy technology, engage in joint commercial nuclear power ventures as well, and also collaborate on non-proliferation goals. President Bush originally submitted this proposal to Congress back in 2008, but he then withdrew the measure after Russia invaded neighboring Georgia. In Virginia, Dominion says it has now selected a nuclear reactor for what would be its third unit at the North Anna Station in the central part of the state. The company chose Mitsubishi Heavy Industries' advanced pressurized water reactor technology for the project in central Virginia. Dominion has not yet finalized plans to build a new nuclear unit there, but it does expect to make a decision sometime later this year. If Dominion does decide to go forward, the company will then need approval from the NRC and also the Virginia State Corporation Commission. Cape Wind now has a buyer for the electricity generated by the controversial offshore wind farm, or what will eventually be generated. National Grid has agreed to a 15-year contract with the Nantucket Sound Project, paying 20.7 cents per kilowatt hour beginning in 2013. That price would then rise 3.5% each year for inflation. The deal is considered crucial for financing the roughly $2 billion Cape Wind project. Massachusetts state regulators still need to approve the deal. National Grid says the agreement will add about $1.50 to the average customer's monthly electricity bill beginning in 2013. Massachusetts Energy and Environmental Secretary Ian Bowles puts that figure between $0.47 cents and $1.33 per month. And to our south today, Walmart is rolling back GHG emissions in Mexico. The retail giant has begun powering all of its nearly 350 stores in the country with electricity generated by a 67.5 megawatt wind plant. That farm has 27 turbines. It's a partnership between Electrica del Valle de Mexico and also Walmart itself. Officials say 137,000 tons of GHGs will be eliminated every year because of that partnership. Well, as we wrap up the work week here in Washington, we'll take a look at what is ahead on Monday here in the Washington, D.C. area. The Alliance to Save Energy is holding its EE Global Forum and Exposition. This is a three-day event here in Washington. Clean Skies News will be on hand talking to some of the key players. You can see those interviews throughout the week here on the Energy Report. And that is this Friday afternoon edition. Thanks so much for joining us. A reminder, you can reach our team here in Washington anytime at contact at cleanskies.com. You can also follow us throughout your day on Facebook and Twitter. From all of us here in the Energy News Center, we're glad you're with us. I'm Tyler Suters, and you're watching Clean Skies News.